measurement, and motion. Learning objectives Ancient methods of measurement 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 of length Motion, and its types One of the most important things that scientists do, is to perform experiments. Experiments are done, by making measurements. Measurement means, giving a number to something, that is measurable, such as length, mass, and, volume. Measurement of most of things is very simple today. We have many instruments, and tools, at our disposal. People in ancient times did not have those facilities. For example, when they traveled from one place to another, they had no way of telling, how far they had traveled. They did not have a reliable method, to measure distance. But, why do we need to measure distance, or length? When we go from one place to another, it is of interest to know, how far we have traveled. That is, we need to know the distance between the two places. Depend on the distance, we can choose a reliable mode of transport. Measurement of length, is also important. A tailor needs exact measurements, to stick clothes, that would fit perfectly. You may need to know, how big your playground is, or, if you are taller than your friend, etc. Measurement is the process of finding the length, size, or quantity of a substance. When we talk about measurement, we have to think of two things. The measuring instrument, and how to represent the measurement. Ruler, and measuring tape, are the common instruments used to measure length. When we represent length, we say 8 centimeters, 15 kilometers, etc. Centimeter, kilometer, etc. are the units of measurement. A unit, is a fixed quantity with respect to which, a physical quantity such as, length is measured. In ancient days, people used to measure by hand span, foot span, cubit, fathom, etc. These were, the units for measurement. Handspan, is the distance between the tip of the thumb, and the tip of the little finger of a fully stretched hand. Cubit, is the distance between the tip of the middle finger, and the elbow. Fathom is length of the outstretched arms. And, foot span, is the distance between the tip of the little finger, and the heel. However, these units are not reliable, as the length of the body parts varies from person to person. Therefore, people realized the need for standard units of measurement. Units, that have a fixed quantity and do not vary from person to person, and, place to place are called, standard units. To communicate the ideas with each other properly. Scientists from all over the world adopted a common set of units in 1960, called, International System of Units, or the SI units. SI units of length is meter. 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeters. 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. And, 1000 meters is equal to 1 kilometers. In order to measure length, we need measuring tools, or instruments. Examples of measuring instruments are ruler, measuring tape, meter rod, and so on. The distance of something from one end to the other is called, length. A divider is used to measure the distance between two points. The divider is placed such that each tip is at points A and B. Then, without disturbing the divider, the distance between the two points is measured with a ruler. The length of a curved line can be measured using a string. The string is placed along the curved line, and its ends are marked on the string. The length of the string between the marked points, is measured with a ruler. Now let us learn about motion, and its types. 
an object that moved is said to be in motion. The object always moves with respect to another object, and time. For example, when we say a vehicle is moving, it is always with respect to the trees, and poles on the road that are not moving. An object is said to be at rest, when it does not move from its position. For example, tree, house, traffic signal, etc. There are different types of motion. Translational, rotational, periodic, and non-periodic, etc. A type of motion, in which all parts of an object moves the same distance in a given time is called, translational motion. Examples are, vehicle moving on road, a child going down a slide, etc. There are two types of translational motion, rectilinear and curvilinear. When an object in translational motion moves in a straight line, it is said to be in rectilinear motion. Example Train moving on a straight track. When an object in translational motion moves along a curved path, it is said to be in curvilinear motion. Example A car taking a turn. When an object moves about an axis, and different parts of it move by different distances in a given interval of time, it is said to be in rotational motion. Examples Rotating fan, merry go round windmill, etc. A type of motion that repeats itself after equal intervals of time is called periodic motion. Examples Pendulum The Earth's rotation Hands of clock Electric fan, etc. A motion that does not repeat itself at regular intervals, or a motion that does not repeat itself at all is called non-periodic motion. Example A car moving on road Birds flying, etc. In everyday life, we observe more than one type of motion such as, birds gliding across sky, shows translational, and non-periodic motions. Rotation of Earth, shows rotational, and periodic motion. Oscillatory motion is to and fro motion of the body, about its fixed position. Oscillatory motion is a type of periodic motion. Examples of oscillatory motion are, vibrating strings, swinging of the swing, etc. Motion, whose direction changes continuously is called, random motion. Examples are, a butterfly flitting from flower to flower, and, motion of football players, 